how do mixing services work? Do they put dozens of inputs and outputs into each transaction in order to circulate the funds while incurring minimal transaction fees? Uh, yes, Pavel. Uh, what you're describing there is called a coin join, which was invented um, by I, I think a couple of people, but most uh, prominently Greg Maxwell, who's one of the uh, Bitcoin Core developers back in 2012 or 2013. A coin join transaction is one where um, over several rounds with several transactions, the inputs and outputs are shuffled and joined from several different participants, where each participant uh, partially signs their input and their output in such a way um, that the transaction can proceed in a way that they don't have to trust the other participants. And by um, mixing inputs and outputs across uh, several rounds of transactions, perhaps four, six, eight, or ten transactions, um, these uh, types of services, which do coin join, um, offer the ability for people to um, reduce their um, reduce the ability of analytics companies and uh, snoops and other um, privacy violations. That they're not foolproof. And so Pavel also asks, are there any mixing services that can really make funds anonymous given the growth of analytical tools? And the answer, Pavel, is really no. Um, the reason for that is because while these services can obfuscate transactions for the purposes of just relative privacy. Um, given sufficient analysis, and also these analytical companies have access to information from exchanges that identifies addresses and associates it with specific people, um, the combination of having a broad picture from multiple exchanges and merchant services that are feeding them data, and the ability to do statistical analysis means that most of that anonymity can be stripped away by analytical tools. Part of the reason for that is that while addresses can be um, made stealth and, and the identity link made weak, in a coin join transaction, the one thing you can't hide is the value. And you can do statistical correlation analysis on the inputs and outputs to associate the values as they're going through. So the values are shown clearly within a transaction. The solution to that also comes from Greg Maxwell, who has um, proposed and implemented a prototype of a system called Confidential Transactions, which is a system that encrypts the amount in a transaction, but still allows everyone to verify that the amounts add up without knowing what they are. Confidential Transactions is something that has been part of the Elements project at Blockstream. And, um, it's developed quite a bit. Uh, as part of confidential transactions, Greg Maxwell invented some new cryptography, including range proofs, uh, which then uh, became more and more efficient. Uh, and the latest version of range proofs is called bullet proofs, which is a very, very efficient mechanism for proving that the values add up, even though they're encrypted within a confidential transaction. Now, confidential transactions encrypt the value. Um, but that doesn't mean they're used on their own. They would be used in conjunction with something like CoinJoin to mix up the addresses. And so, you if you have both address anonymization and the encryption of the amount, uh, then analytical tools will have a very difficult time uh, tracking transactions. Final question from Pavel, all in the same theme. Is it cheaper and more effective to anonymize funds by exchanging them into Monero and back? Um, possibly. There, there are some significant risks in doing that, in terms of privacy and anonymity. Um, one of them is that most of the time, exchanging funds, at least uh, through a third party, such as an exchange or Shapeshift, um, will produce a trail because those companies, um, for many different reasons, have to collect some information, and uh, that information may be um, captured, let's say, by various parties. What's more interesting is the possibility of doing atomic 
on blockchain swaps between uh, different cryptocurrencies as a means of increasing anonymity and, and privacy, including uh, atomic cross-chain swaps through payment channels on Lightning Network. So that may have a significant impact on privacy and anonymity in the near future. But these are still pretty early days when it comes to privacy. And as I've said, I think this is one of the uh, weaknesses of almost all cryptocurrencies. Vikas asks, can CoinJoin and Tor be used to offer a level of privacy on the Bitcoin network? Which wallet currently offers these services? Does CoinJoin require you to trust the third party for the transaction? Uh, Vikas, yes. CoinJoin and Tor are tools that are often used to increase the privacy that you get on the Bitcoin network. Um, I know at least one wallet that offers um, both CoinJoin services. They, they call them Ricochet. But it's basically the same type of coin mixing uh, and redirection, and also offers Tor networking, and that's Samurai Wallet. I believe you can also configure other wallets like uh, Mycelium, uh, I believe Bread Wallet, and a few others. You can configure them to use a Tor transport. And finally, for your last question, does CoinJoin require you to trust a third party for the transaction? No, it doesn't. It's a trustless multi-party signature protocol. Mm -hmm.